Hello world, welcome to the 225th video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane, like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. Over the past several weeks, I've been automating the dividend tracking. So I'm a dividend investor. So over the last several videos, we've created a dividend tracker and it culminated in me having my own dividend dashboard. And you can watch that video by clicking here. But now I'm getting to the point where I want to automate more and I want to automate the selecting of the dividend stocks. And so in this video, we're going to use three methods to get financial data so we can get some ratios on any dividend stock to help us pick dividend stocks going forward. So just a quick disclaimer, this is for educational purposes only and it's not meant for financial advice. So please don't uh, use these three ratios to select stocks. This is just the foundation. And so the three methods we'll be using is number one, we'll be using the Alpha Vantage API to pull the annual statements that we need to get two pieces of information to get the debt to equity ratio. And I'll explain what each one of these is in more detail when we get to the code. And then the second one, we're going to use web scraping again using Selenium. And we're going to go out and pull off, pull the payout ratio. And that's an important ratio for dividend stocks. And then lastly, we're going to use one of the most common investment libraries in Python called Y Finance. And we're just simply going to get the price to earnings ratio. And so those are the three ratios we're going to use. Please consider subscribing to this channel, liking this video and leaving a comment with your favorite dividend stock. So now let's check out the code. Okay. So now that we're in the code, um, I'm going to go over the code quickly because I've made other videos on how to use each parts of these and we're just combining them. So the first thing we're going to do, anytime you're using Selenium, you're most likely going to use time. So go ahead and import time. Uh, import request to use Alpha Vantage. And then from Selenium, we're going to import everything else. So basically, from Selenium, import WebDriver. From Selenium.WebDriver, we're going to load some options. Uh, I'm not going to go into the Selenium options because you can click on a video here to do that. And I just want to point out this from Alpha Vantage key, import Alpha Vantage API key. Do not copy this into your code. Instead, watch the video here. And I'll leave a link in the description. And what I'm doing is I'm keeping the key hidden because I have a YouTube channel. So you're, you're not going to do this. I will show you where to put your API key. So don't uh, do this one. Time and requests are standard libraries. You don't need to pip install these. Selenium, you will need to pip install. And Y Finance, you will need to pip install. Uh, if you're using PyCharm, you can go to File, Settings. And then your project that you're in. Click on Python Interpreter and then click here. So you could type in Selenium and go ahead and install that package. And Y Finance, go ahead and install that package. Then uh, it's getting harder and harder to use uh, Selenium as many websites are trying to block automation. So if you watch my Selenium video, I'll go over all these options, but these are just different options you'll need to correctly use Selenium uh, for Chrome, at least. Uh, you could check out the documentation for Firefox, but it's very similar, Firefox options. But for now, I'm using Chrome. And then we get down here to the driver. So driver equals webdriver.chrome. Service equals Chrome service, Chrome driver manager dot install, options equals Chrome options, and that's how it loads all these. And so this is really nice because you used to have to download a Chrome driver and make sure it was updated every time, but this automatically installs it. So we're going to skip over the major functions at first and let me explain why. So we're going to get the payout ratio like I explained in the intro. 
Then we're going to get the debt to equity ratio. And then we're going to get the price to earnings ratio and the dividend yield. So I'm actually going to start in our main right here. So at the very bottom, almost very bottom, I created a function called main. And then first we're going to do that API key. So for yours, if you're copying this, you're going to follow my video for the Alpha Vantage key. And then you're just going to copy and paste the huge key here like this, whatever it is. Okay, but since I have a YouTube video and there's a limit to how many times you can use Alpha Vantage, uh, I can't have my audience using my key to make their own calls. So API key equals this Alpha Vantage API key. The company symbol, we're going to use Apple, but I'm going to show you why. Make sure you're using the, the a good dividend stock for one of the websites we go to. And then we're going to do balance sheet equals get balance sheet, and we're going to pass it the Alpha Vantage API key and the company symbol. And then once we get the balance sheet, we're going to do the debt to equity ratio. And then we're going to calculate the debt to equity uh, debt to equity ratio using the balance sheet and let me explain what that is so we're gonna go up to this get balance sheet we're gonna get the API key and the symbol the URL is going to be this formatted string that's what the F means and we're going to use this URL code right here and it goes to Alpha Vantage. It pulls the balance sheet. We're going to pass it the company symbol, which was Apple. And we're going to pass it the API key. And that is the URL that you use to pull the whole balance sheet. Then we're going to do response equals request.get. And we're going to pass it this URL. Then we're going to return all of that data in a response.json. And now we have all the balance sheet data here, which is what is in this variable right here, balance sheet. Then we're going to calculate the debt to equity ratio equals calculate debt to equity ratio. Passing it the balance sheet, we go up here. So if annual reports, so that just means if annual reports exists in balance sheet and balance sheet equals annual reports, that's the title of it. Then we want the latest report equals balance sheet, annual reports. Then you want the zero width index or the first index. Then we want to get the total debt equals a float because anytime you pull from a JSON, it's a string. The latest report, we want the short long term debt total. And then we want the equity. So we want a float. In the latest report, we want total shareholder equity. And as long as the total equity does not equal zero, then we're going to return the debt to equity ratio, which is simply the debt divided by the equity. And that ratio compares the company's total liabilities to its shareholder equity. Um, so a lower ratio doesn't mean anything. So like I said, this is educational only. And every industry is different. So a debt to equity ratio of Apple is could be different than a debt to equity ratio of a real estate company. But let's see if we can look for um, the last time I pulled Apple data. And let's look at what in the world am I talking about. So if you were to print that data, this is all this stuff you are you're gonna get from alpha vantage so it's pretty huge right here it is several pages I can't remember how many pages and right now we're looking at Apple if you remember from the JSON that I'm parsing I'm looking in annual reports all right so this is the annual reports and then we looked for, what did we look for? Um, the zero width index. So that means this is the last one it pulled right here. 
And then we're going to look for short long-term debt. So let's type in short long-term debt total, which is right here. This is the first one it pulls up because we're in the most current report. And then we're going to look for total shareholder equity, which I can see right here. I don't have to control find it. So all we're doing is taking this short and long-term debt total, dividing by shareholder equity. And that is how we get this debt to equity ratio. So if the debt to equity ratio is not none, so assuming it's not zero, then we're going to print out this formatted string of debt to equity debt to equity ratio of Apple in our case is, and it's going to give us the ratio to two decimals. Else, if we run into any problems, it's going to say could not calculate the debt to equity ratio. So next, we're going to calculate the payout ratio. The payout ratio is how much does that dividend pay out compared to the earnings of the company. So what we're going to do is get the payout ratio. And we could do this doing the annual reports, but it gets kind of tricky because the payout ratio is what's called like a current indicator, which means you need current data, not the last annual fiscal report. So what we're going to do is go to this function right here, and we're going to use Selenium now. So we're going to get the payout ratio by using this website called KoiFin. So let's check out an example of what it looks like when we're just browsing the internet. So replace this symbol with Apple, and it comes to this website right here and it gives us the payout ratio right here. So we're going to web scrape that right here. Uh, you gotta press inspect twice. I don't know, that's just a rule for Selenium. So first, the way you do that is we're gonna pass it the URL. You saw the URL in action, so it's the URL plus the symbol that we passed it. Then driver.get URL, I already explained the driver is right here, we just did it. Next, we're gonna sleep for two seconds. Uh, there's a better way to do this sometimes, depending on your internet connection. You can do a driver, uh, you can wait until that element is found, but since we're only getting one symbol right now, two seconds is fine. So payout ratio equals element by xpath and uh, I had to use chat GPT for this. So what it's saying is first we're going to look for this class right here. Uh, and I'll show you that in a second. And we're going to look for a text that says payout ratio. And right underneath that we're going to find this class. That's wild, right? I had no idea how to find that. Because let's look at this dividend yield, right? Inspect it. The class is text 2XL leading 1.08. Let's look at this 96 cents right here. Inspect. That is also text 2L 1.8. And finally, let's look at this one. Text 2XL leading 1.8. And so what this is saying is we're going to find the one above it, which is 1.6. So let's check that out. There it is, 1.6. Then we're going to say, does that text of this class say payout ratio? It does. Then we want the following class that says this 1.8, and we want the first element. And it's going to give us 15.08% as a string. So what we're going to do is say percentage value equals float, payout ratio text dot strip, so we're going to strip the percentage and then change it to a float. And then the value, since it's just going to be, in our case, point, or it's going to be 15.08. Uh, but as a float, it's not 15%, right? That would mean that would be 1,500%. So then we're going to divide it by 100. So we get 0.15, which is the same as 15%. 
Now, what I need to do is add some logic in here because let's look at another company. So what if a company uh, doesn't have the right kind of earnings to calculate it? So we're going to look at Bristol Myers Squibb and here the payout ratio is zero, right? And that's because it doesn't have the necessary math to calculate that in its annual reports. So that's where it gets tricky. Uh, but in this case, I don't have any logic in here because this is just the beginning. This is just the skeleton of what I plan to do. Then we do driver.quit. Then we return that ratio number. And similar to how we did it above, if the payout ratio is not zero, then we're going to say the payout ratio of Apple, in our case, is blank times 100, 0.2F percentage. That way now we go back to a string. And the reason why I did that is because eventually I don't want it in a string. I want to do math. And I want to say if it's less than 0.15, then don't look at it. So that's why I'm converting it to a float first. Then the easier one is ticker data equals yf dot ticker, pass it to Apple, and now you have a bunch of methods to get different information. So the price to earnings ratio is just the price divided by earnings per share. So that's easy with Y Finance. So ticker data dot info equals trailing price to earnings ratio. Then we do a print statement just like we did the others. And then dividend yield equals ticker data dot info, just like this one. But now we're passing it dividend yield. And then we're going to print it. That's simple with Y Finance. Or, yeah, Y Finance. And then if name equals main, call main, right? That's why I started in main. So finally, let's see what that looks like. And there we go. There's all the print statements. So Apple's debt to equity ratio of Apple, according to its last fiscal report, which was in September of 2023, was 1.79. The payout ratio for Apple is 15%. The price to earnings on Apple is 28.47. Uh, that's kind of large compared to when I just ran this, uh, when I was writing the script because uh, its price just jumped up dramatically over the past couple days. And then the dividend yield of Apple is 0 0.0055. And that does not account for the new dividend increase it just mentioned. So pretty long video, but basically we went over three separate videos. Alpha Vantage, the Selenium, both of those videos I will put in the description. And then Y Finance, which is very commonly used and easy to use. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please uh, consider subscribing to my channel and liking this video. And thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.